Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you welcome back, but today is the first, the first of many. Uh, what we're doing here is our duty. We have to commemorate and uh, help record the experience of the Colorado hip hop community and scene and history and culture. Uh, today, we are going to start off with a bang. Uh, the, the, the real goal of today is to make sure that people either leave with more info because they were already fans or people wake the fuck up because you really been sleeping. You really oh. been sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> wake the fuck up. <laughs> Truth be told, uh, when y'all, okay, so, so Colorado, we love hip hop. Don't get me wrong. Colorado's got bars. Lots of Colorado's got bars, but. Truth be told, y'all bars didn't last. Y'all bars fell off. You switched styles. You wasn't you wasn't keeping up with yourself. You didn't stay authentic. And when you didn't stay authentic, this motherfucker right here did. Okay, uh, let me tell you, even if you are in Denver and you're paying attention, or if you're in Aurora and you're not paying attention, or you're in California and you might be a little tapped in, or if you're in Paris, France, you probably heard of this motherfucker today. He is worldwide, so don't call him a local rapper. But for us, in our hometown, we represent him locally because we love him. Ladies and gentlemen, That's right. please go ahead and make some noise for my boy, Papa J. Ruiz. Hey, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Thank you so much for being here at Dug Out the Crates, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all having me. I appreciate the... The intro and then uh, the claps and all that, the applause. That's love, bro. For real. Real talk. Bro, I'm happy man. to be here. Thank you for having me, y'all. Um, so have fun. Yeah, exactly. And and we we want to kick it off very naturally. Um, this right. is not this is not a news blog. We're not here reporting like ah, you know, we're on this, we're on that. If you do have something you need to promote and you need to to paint a narrative for, please do. I want you to feel welcome yeah, to do that definitely. here. But really, I want I want you to feel like you have a place to come, be an artist, open up about your artistry, maybe tell a little bit about your history. But I'm I'm not a journalist. I'm not here to poke and prod out of you. Mm -hmm. So let me let me uh, give you a few minutes to go ahead and do your own little intro. Maybe give people a recap about you, so who your I music, am. who you are. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, definitely. My name is Papa J Ruiz. Um, look, how can I explain my journey? I'm I'm, I'm an artist, a uh, hip hop artist. A lot of people say I'm hip hop legend, all kinds of stuff, but uh. Uh, I look at myself as an artist, as a hustler, entrepreneur, uh, family man, you know, all that. Um, I started rapping uh, at a young age. That shit just been in me ever since I was a kid. Like, I love music. Started rapping at early age. We'll get into all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, just dropped a lot of songs. My biggest song, Kiss the Sky. Uh, people know that for a lot of different reasons. Hit. Yeah, yeah. And I got a lot of other underground hits and... Man, I'm just the MC. I'm just uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty fucking dope. dope, 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 dope. You use that word underground, and I kind of wanna I wanna harp on that for a second because right, uh, everybody who who follows hip hop knows that there's different styles of yeah. hip hop, and it's really easy to to write a certain sound off when you hear a certain type of snare or a mm -hmm. certain type of beat or whatever. Motherfuckers be like, oh, that's the underground shit. Right. I feel like. Stereotypically, what we call an underground sound, yeah. you've had a lot of success in bringing that to the commercial industry and, right. and the mainstream and making sure it's on a platform that's bigger than most people get. Do you know why that is? Like, why you're so much ahead of all these other motherfuckers who are so hip-hop and shit? Like, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, it's just like years of years of years of years of just like really being a fan and like being a, 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 a student. Of yeah. it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always, I, I mean, ever since I was a kid, like, my life always consisted of being a student. Like, not not even whether it's in school or whether it's, like, lectures from my pops or my moms. Or, like, you know, I grew up really, like, enjoying, like, you know, like, the Ninja Turtle story or Batman and shit. Like, they always had someone, like, Batman had Alfred. Ninja Turtles had Splinter. Like, someone to, you know. Guide them. Guide them and shit. So I think like I always, I was always, uh, I didn't ever have pride or ego in in seeking mentorship, yeah. or seeking knowledge or seeking advice. Like it never bruised my ego. You know sure. what I'm saying? For sure. So, 
So I could ask anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why that's why one of that's one of my favorite bars from so, from Tupac where he was like even a genius asked questions. So that, that's, you know how, what I'm that's how you become a genius. Exactly. Bro. He was asking. You yeah. Know? You have to spend all your time asking questions. Right. To consider the genius project. Right. Wait, wait, hold on, bro. Um, so you was talking about like you uh, underlined on that uh, underground. Right. I kind of heard something else where you say you a MC. Right. And I feel like a lot of artists in Colorado they don't see themselves as MCs. They just see themselves right. like, oh, I'm right. a rapper. It's definitely yeah. 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 a lost term. You know, like niggas will prefer them to be labeled as a street nigga, as a real nigga, as a hustler, as a killer, as a right. gangster, as a real blood crit, whatever. Before they get accept, uh, before they would want to be labeled as a rapper or right. an MC or, a, you know, what I'm saying an artist or whatever. But like, as far as like the rap shit, yeah, I, I'm a rapper because rapping is what I do. But MCing is like, you know, it's like what I say. It come with being a student. It come with respecting yeah. your elders, like knowing the history, uh, not just coming into this bitch and thinking you that nigga all the time. You know, it's so a, it's a from, MC is big for me. Yeah, I tell people it's like a, it's it's gotta be in you, in your soul. You know, what I'm saying? facts. It's like, like Nip said, it gotta be in you, not on you. Yeah, if you learn this shit, it was never for you in the first place. Exactly. Um, speak speaking of that that tone right there. Um, if it's in you, not on you, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, it's something that came from your upbringing or your parents. Facts. Tell us about your parents if you can. Like, uh, as far as I know, as a fan of you, I yeah. know that they're like one of them is Colombian. They're both Colombian. Yeah, yeah, they both. Okay, uh, cool. That's yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, they both from Colombia. They both uh, from Bogota, Colombia. They uh, met out there. They born out there, raised out there. They they didn't come out to America until 1979. Oh. They got married and they came out here. Uh, it's it's a long story, but it's really dope. Dope, 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 dope. My dad's younger than my mom. Uh, my dad met my mom. It didn't really work out for like years and shit. And then uh, out of nowhere, you know, he just like he like the way the story he tells, like he loved her so much that he wrote her number on his uh, on his ceiling. <laughs> and you know, years passed by. He's just looking at it, and one day he just said, "I feel like picking up the phone. Let me see if it's still her." Wow. Called. It was her, and he went and met up with her. And he basically told her like, "Yo, like." Just be my wife. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like like nowadays where it's like dating yeah. and courting and you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. So he was just like, let's be my yeah, wife. Yeah, back in the they day. They got married <laughs> and they still married to this day. You know what I'm saying? It's Ladies, going, this if year, you're hearing this, do not put up for anything less. <laughs> right. Do not settle for nothing less. Oh my standards, god. Standards man, standards design. He was waiting. He said, That's my shorty. I'm going for that. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Exactly. So, you know, they met, they did that, and then, uh, you know what I'm saying, they did their thing, and my brother was born, uh, before before my brother was born, they was in Colombia. So, my mom's, uh, my mom's brother, my tío Rey, he wasn't called, he was the first one to come out to California, and, he, and he's just a hustler, he's just that nigga, and he started bringing everybody from his family, cool. one by one, cool. and he had his 10 siblings. Oh, five brothers, five sisters, yeah. and then his mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? And he brought everybody. I'm sorry, you said it's your dad's brother? No, nah, this is my mom's, mom's brother. brother. Okay. And so, by the luck of the draw, like my dad ended up marrying my mom, and a couple yeah. weeks later, he gave her the call, like, you coming to America? And she said, I, I can't come. You know, I got my husband. Okay. He said, he coming too. Oh, so, he said, so, my dad is like that lucky, lucky True nigga. player for real. Yeah, for yeah, real. He ain't worried and, about your husband. Bring him, shot. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and he came, and that like that's why like my dad stood to this day is the only person in America from his family. Okay. By himself. That's cool, though. So, he like, he's blessed. Like, yeah, he's he right came himself. out, yeah, and uh, and they came out here in 1979, and they all their 80s out in L.A. Cool. So... That's where I get my taste in music as far as like the 80s, like Phil Collins, Michael Jackson, Prince, yeah. Yeah. all that fly shit. It's because of my parents. When they came, it, you got to imagine they was like 20. They, they kids too. Yeah. They get to America and they finding out about Mac, Michael Jackson. <laughs> right. They didn't grow up with the whole little Michael. Nope, they're right. Right. They, 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 they experienced big Michael. And, you know, so that's where I get my taste from that. And then 1990, I was born. That would be you know a culture saying? shock for real. Yeah, you so, you got to be a legend to be born of a story like that. Yeah, you know, you know, and then you know that's why Spanish is my first language. With oh them. shit! Because okay. it wasn't until like going to school and being with friends that's how I would say English and watching movies. Yeah. 
you know what I'm saying? Batman Returns, E.T., all those movies taught me Just English. Just watched Batman kid. Returns the other night. It's yeah. a classic. Right. So those movies taught me English, and then in the house is always Spanish. It was Spanish. Did your parents ever teach you, like, English at all? Uh, I mean, I would say they taught me English, but for the most part, I can't really say that I remember a fond memory of my parents sitting me down teaching right. me English. Oh, okay. Like, I just know Spanish with yeah. them, you know what okay. I'm saying, still to this day. But they know English. Right. They, 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 you know, my mom works in the school system. Oh. My dad been a hustler. He does, he owns his own floor company. And, you know, they made a way. Getting so, it, you getting know, it, yeah. They, 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 ain't, they ain't dumb. You, you said that uh, you was watching a bunch of English movies. Facts. And, uh, you know, me and him, we both been bumping a lot of you this week. I've been bumping right. a lot That's of you love. my whole life. That's love. That's love. <laughs> you are yeah. in... In all of my listening, but specifically in Colorado, mm-hmm. you're the king of samples. That's love. Yeah, what the bro. Fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my bro, my God. favorite song from you got that uh, Tupac sample. Oh, through man. life. Which one? Through life. Oh, through life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say we was just listening yeah. to a song on the <laughs> oh, way here. And I, yeah. I actually want to ask you about that. Why? Why you? Uh, why'd you spell it like that? T h r e w. T r r e w. Yeah. Oh man, through. I don't even want to. I'll be real with you, like. Uh-huh. I'm just a horrible speller, bro. Uh, hey, my but, nigga, that's okay. all right. I'm gonna be real with right, you. Right. Hey, okay. make, make some noise for my boy not knowing how to spell. Nah, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be yeah, real with you. Like to be transparent, I'm like a horrible speller. Right. But, um, you know, that's always been something about. So, like, when I was younger, I was always good at spelling bees, spelling everything. Oh, okay. We'd memorize it in, in elementary. But then, like, I wasn't so fond of like being perfect with the spelling. Like I just wanted to get my thoughts out. Right. I was a, a great writer. I love writing. It's it's easy for me. Right. My homeboy even called me today. And he was like, "I don't know how you do it. Like I can't write like you." But uh, going back to what I was saying, bro, it was just like, just it's. I'm sorry. What, what what was we touching on again? You know what? I don't even know. I was lost in the sauce too. Don't trip. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like as far as like hip hop, it's just always been in me, bro. Oh, you know what I'm saying. And, and- the samples. Okay. samples. Samples. Yeah. samples. Yeah. As far as what, what do you want me to explain to you? Uh, like, how did I find them samples? No, like, or? My, you say you're the king of samples. My question, right. my question is, um, so, so I know you're into film culture. You've, Facts. I, I've, I've, like, read posts and stuff about, you know, you're like, I'm watching this film. Watching he looks like he's stalking you, brother. That, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he's not, he's like, support, he real. Yeah. Right, now nah, he's real. I've been around. Support me. I've been around, right? Yeah. Um, hey. Nah, that's uh, a my, nigga. My sincere question is, um, what classifies to you as, like, something like that that belongs in your song like which it, obviously a lot of movies can resonate with right, you right? right but like what when you when you get that Denzel clip or you get I think you did a Terrence Howard clip even once maybe on oh, which one what what uh, what's our it might have been somebody Are you else so many I know samples? I know <laughs> he that said so like... when I'm right I'm right but I could have been wrong cuz even if I'm wrong, then yeah, I could have yeah, been that, right. That, right. Yeah, that's Terrence Howard. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, even that type of shit. I'm like, how did this nigga decide <laughs> to do this crazy ass shit? Because it makes sense when you're watching the movie. Right. And so you have to know the movie to to give a fuck about it. Right, like, right. What resonates like in a movie with you that you're like, oh, I'm, or, or any audio clip, you're like, I'm going to put this in there. Man, it, 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 sometimes it's sometimes the audio clips find me. Yeah. And it's like, it could be anything. It could be like, it could be anything, bro. It could just be like, deep shit, it could be funny shit, it could be like, because I found a sample, like, I was watching the Tommy Boy movie mm-hmm. with, me, with uh, Chris Farley. Far, yeah, Chris yeah. Farley back in the day. And there's a part in there where he's like, you know, basically saying like, some shit that was funny, but he was talking about being a salesman. But I used it in a reference of like, I spit hot fire when I when it was coming out of my mouth. So like, it has to res- resonate with me, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, so a lot of deep shit, but even like I would say, uh, the way I find my samples is also like what I'm building. So there's samples like on the, my album No Recollection. People probably look at it like a dope album, but like in all reality, that album I named it No Recollection because every time we was in the fucking studio, we was drinking. Okay. <laughs> I have a great recollection of shit. That's why I'm a rapper. But yeah. everybody around me would be like, "Oh, I'm so drunk." I don't remember. <laughs> and then one nigga, one nigga that was around me at the time, he had used that term. Man, I have no recollection of what happened last night. And it's certain things that just flow with me. Like, my titles have to flow. The story has to flow. So, like, that's why my titles are different. Like, No Recollection, HR 1955, yeah. East Money Bless You, Southeast Rue. It's, it got to tell a story for me. And uh, even on HR 1955, like, one of the samples in that song, 
I got a song called Running From The Police slash Dear the Mr. President. Mm-hmm. And before the song come, I got a clip in there where it's like the uh, the cops are chasing Tyrants somebody. Shit, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And in the in the in the sample, you hear the cops say, "He going down. He going right. He going down Mississippi. Going down Mississippi." <laughs> Every city has a Mississippi. Of course. You the can thing find is, that is, is I'm a big fan of cops. Yeah. Uh, like the show. So you've heard it already. The, yeah, I'm You're a like, big. Oh, we got a Mississippi. Right. Yeah, I'm like, oh, we got a Mississippi. I'm painting a picture. Right. Hell yeah. It, it, it don't have to necessarily. Be, it could be Mississippi the state. Yep. But I'm taking yep. that and I'm making it a part of my world. Yes, that shit's hard. And, bro. and you know what yeah. I'm saying? So because to me it's like, I, well, shit, like I, my homies really ran from the cops on Mississippi Ave. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? I really was on Mississippi Ave in Aurora. So like that's, that's where it like connects right. with me. Where it's like, all right, I'm, that's one of my streets' names that we've been on. I'm so throwing that, it on there. You know? That right there is a perfect segue into my next question, and then right. I'm gonna pass it to Cool You because he's got a few questions right. for you and shit too. Let's but but like you were saying, when it you create the story that's yours, okay? And I, I told you before before we started recording, I was like, I need to talk to you about this A Measy bar, right? Okay, yeah. A Measy, wherever you are, bro, I just want to thank you. Uh, most people, okay, so real talk, I, I'm raised in Littleton, right? A lot yeah. of people know I'm from down south, L Block, right? I'm mm-hmm. happy to be a Lakeview kid, right? But I spent a lot of time in the east side. I was born in the east side off 31st and Gaylord. I went to Bruce Randolph from middle school and high school. This nigga A Measy. Yeah, east side nigga. This nigga said, I got, A Meezy like got A's. bars, Mr. Bro, A's. That, and you know what? what's crazy? It's like, I'm going to be real because, like, I'm a real, I'm a real Aurora baby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But see, this is the shit that I don't need to go on camera saying shit, but like, yeah. I grew up, my mama, she owned her, my, my family hustlers. Yeah. So when I was in high school, middle school, my mama owned a salon cool. called Colorado Beauty Salon. Off of Josephine. Right there. Oh, shit. In, yeah. In that in the, plaza. Yeah. That was my mama's yeah, salon. Yeah, her. For years. That's I used to be up. in there on the register plat and everybody's taking hey, that's money salon for there. her. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Make some noise for Papa J. Ruiz's mother. <laughs> Let's go. Let's so, go. to me, it's like, that's why it's like, I'm I'm a Aurora kid, but shit, I know where the east side is. Absolutely. I grew up in the east side. I used to go to the neighborhood, putting out flyers yep. for my mom. Yep. And when he said Mr. A's, I already knew that. Because that yeah. bar is right there, and that's a legendary yeah. bar in the east side. You got to be you gotta be from Colorado, though, to, to know, really, shit to like know that. that type of shit. Because anybody else is going to be like, cool. Yeah. Bar, he got a bar. But, and that's okay, because you it's not for you. Like, it means exactly. he didn't write it for everybody in the world. That exactly. was some real hometown shit. So thank you, A. Measy. That yeah, no, nah, shout hard. out my nigga A. Measy. He cool. Like, and he one of the, I'll be the real, like, he one of the first artists in Colorado that, like, was like, very receptive to me and really like like let's collaborate and shit like you know how niggas do they yeah. give you the run around whatever yeah. you know you can take it personal and you can to not it's the game but uh he was open like and the thing is i think why maybe perhaps he could speak for himself like sure. his perspective sure. when he get a chance but i think one of the reasons why he was probably open to it is because it was like twitter yeah. niggas was on twitter talking about like why Amy Z and Papa Jane did the song together? Cause we both Absolutely. we both spit. I agree to hundred percent. To me, I'm just like one. I'm a businessman, and then two, I'm a hip hop nigga. Sure. So it's like I said, bro. That like, ego shit easy for me to get rid of. Yep. E- ego and pride, like but where it works. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's not touching my family, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's easy for me to say, well, shit. I hear the streets saying it. I reach out. Get the people what they want. Exactly. I reach yeah. out and I reached out and then he was open to it and we did it. It was easy. He pulled up. We got the video coming out soon. Oh, we shit. already got it shot. Say less. Yeah, we already got uh, it shot. We've been shot it. The uh, traits, what's it called? Criminal? Uh dangerous, dangerous traits. Dangerous, dangerous traits. Dangerous traits. Hard. Yeah. Hard. Track number I believe it's number two. Yeah. Number two on er- the album. Early on. Early yeah, on. yeah. No, nah, definitely how to put it on there. And it was dope because you know he an East Side nigga. So Absolutely. he and he he positive. That very, his thing. very, and and powerful in the in the in the culture for the city too. Like he's Facts. not, right. he's not Facts. a small name. At yeah. all. And for one of the newer generation, like he actually do got bars. Like he, yeah, I feel yeah, like he, he's one of the MCs. I could yeah, say. exactly. He an MC. You could tell he, he you, you could tell you're a student. Yeah. All right, so I got a couple of like it's more like lighter questions. You know, yeah, yeah, ain't yeah, nothing too serious. But uh, let's say you in the studio, right? What you need, what what three things do you need to have like a good session in the studio? Shit, just some water, some weed. Oh shit. Oh, uh, that's it, bro. Like before, I used to think I needed everything. Right. I used to think I needed friends, niggas, strangers, niggas to tell me like that, that shit banging. Right. And 
at, in my younger years, it was cool because it really got my name out there. People would start talking. You know, word of mouth is the best thing. But now that I'm older, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't want to rap in front of all these random niggas or <laughs> niggas that's my friends when I'm talking, trying to do a song about my wife right. or talk about my moms and pops or personal shit that I experience. Um, it's like, you know, and then also it's like you you learn as you go. You know, I used to I used to run with a lot of niggas and invite them to stew and all that, and it would be cool. But you start learning, like, you know, uh, for me, it's, it, it, it's work. A lot of people yeah. look at it as, like, it's fun. Right. It's and then it's like, I'm working. I'm, I'm trying to do some shit, and I'm personal on these songs. I'm not just, like, trying to... I'm not telling niggas to shake their ass. And <laughs> about That's not my music. Right. So it's like, at the same time, it's like, uh, you know... Niggas, think, niggas trying to have a good time, so they might end up inviting some niggas that they know. Mm-hmm. I don't know them niggas. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? No, or no. they might inv- invite some girls that they trying to make impress. <laughs> make them look like, yo, I'm in the mix and I'm doing right. this. I'm at a studio and I work with this. Nah, I'm in the studio with Papa But then Jay. again, it's <laughs> like, you know, now you causing conflict between me and my wife. And them girls and that's can't my, even, and that's, they can't that's, sing, that's, that's they don't my, contribute. Exactly, no. and that's my piece. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I can't. I've never been the type of nigga to like have my world so unorganized and like yelling and fighting and everything chaos mm-hmm. for the lack of a better term mm-hmm. and feel like I could just go create music in a peace of mind. Okay. Like it's never been able to just like That's... like like the things that need to be on point need to be on point. That's why I, I started engineering create. myself and getting yeah. in the house because just like I was just fighting with my bro. Like I love my bro. Shout out my bro K and O. But he knows he and I just used to <laughs> fight about shit, bro. Yeah. And like it was. It was not contributing to the music, so right. I just got in and on doing my own thing. Right, and right. With now we connect, and it's like, bro, I've been doing this, you've been doing that. It's beautiful. It's a yeah, good yeah. synergy. Now that is beautiful, bro. We yeah. can touch more on on shit like that, but like having friends like that is real beautiful. Got to grow because it, there's not a it. lot of niggas like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you got to grow through it together. Yeah, and, and nah, get facts. Right. Uh, so, um, you got any advices for like any kids right now that's thinking about making music? Advice in in what sense? Like what kind of advice? If they scared to get in the studio, or like they, you know what I mean, like they want to make a song but they don't know how. Like, yeah. What what's the what's the like before you decide that you're gonna become an actual rapper? What's something that they should check off the list first? Is it really something you want to do? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, Hit them where it hurts, bro. Hit them saying? where because like, this is important. Because, yeah, yeah facts. Right, let's let's fire some shots because the the, the tr- they need the truth in this situation. Right, right. Uh, I would say, hey, is is it something that you really want to do? Because like, you know, them niggas, I'm famous niggas make shit look sweet. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure they got their own issues and shit it too. Easy too. Yeah, they. I'm sure they have their own issues. Like I can't speak for them. They on a different level. But what I'm trying to get at is like. You gotta be willing to do this shit and go through it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna go through everything, bro. You're gonna go through fake friends. You're gonna go through janky promoters. You're gonna go through small budgets. You're gonna meet directors that don't send your shit for two months. Uh, you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna meet, you know you're gonna meet niggas that are just entitled, ego. You gotta just be willing to go through it and know that that's what you're gonna go through for what you want. I have literally waited two months for one of my videos. Shout out to the videographer. I'm not going to name you here. You know who you are. I love you, but I waited two months, nigga. <laughs> shit was whack. <laughs> I'm saying, bro, I don't fuck with shit like that. Like, to me, I think, and I think, like, niggas know how I work. Like, when I work with them, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I work fast. So I do. I do my thing. Oh, speaking like, of, you know speaking of work, uh, I was very excited to see this one. I'm, like... I have this like weird like A and R piece in my brain. Like yeah. I want to put people together and shit. And I was so excited to see when you and uh, Parkside Plugs came together. Oh yeah, to make yeah, some, that's some hot shit. Homie. Yeah, facts. Some hot shit for real. You guys did well. Yeah. So, uh, speak on that for me. Man. Shit, bro. I'm gonna be real. That shit was just like random. Like shit, nigga. I was just on social media and shit, and uh, I can't really, I can't really put my my hand on it in the sense of like uh, I don't know if the nigga followed me or if I followed him I don't know what it was but either way we both ended up following each other and uh, I, I, shit I'm gonna keep it G like I went through his profile and I seen that he was uh, he was in a picture with Money Sign Sway yeah yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I fuck with money and sign Sway. Absolutely. I'm a, Sway's as hard. much as I'm a dad, as, as much as I'm a Colorado nigga, and I grew up out here. LA. 
roots. Yeah. Like my roots is LA. Yeah. So it's like I'm gonna always be in tune with LA Absolutely. and and everything. And I'm in tune with New York and East Coast because yeah. of just uh, my hip hop head. The culture, but, yeah. Yeah, but LA is like that's me. You know what I'm saying? LA is me and uh I'll keep it real one hundred with you. Like I seen that money sign sway shit. I fuck with Sway before he was even popping popping. And he still ain't even like on a universal level yet. He's still coming up. Yeah. But he's fire yeah. and uh I was like, all right, that's cool. Nigga fucked with him. That might be one of his homeboys. I ain't seen him. You know what I'm saying? But the thing that got me is the nigga, hey, he, bro, plugs, bro, he had a picture of him on the Range U track at the Range U high school. Oh, oh, bet. That's my high school. Yeah. I went to high school. Yeah. I didn't know that. On that same track that he took that's a picture of, nigga, I done got in fights in that <laughs> track. Yeah. So, like, when I seen that, I'm like, got yo, it. what's happening, bro? I was like, where you, you from Aurora? What's cracking? Yeah. And then that's how we started the dialogue. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And like I said, I'm not a prideful nigga, bro. So I told a nigga, hey, bro, I got a hoodie for you. It's yeah. good. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And, you know, I'm just like that, bro. Like, I pull up, Dolo, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Bro had his people with him as he should because he don't know me. Yeah. He didn't know me from a can of paint that time. Yeah. But like me, that, like, I like to demonstrate, like, shit, sure. you could be with 100 niggas. I'm pulling up. What's yes, happening? Sir. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Gave him the hoodie, and that's how we started building more repertoire. Uh, I mean, a rapport, and uh, and uh, yeah, and then it just came from there. He was doing his thing, and uh, he seen that uh, he didn't really. I don't want to say like he was he wasn't hip to my stuff yet. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, I was on his story. I was watching his story, and he had posted a, a, a song of Devout. Oh yeah, back in the day. Yeah, and I told him I was like, shit, bro, I got a song with Devout. You've like, been on that, yeah. yeah. And I was like. Oh, bro is young. Yep. My bro, yep. my, you know, plus young. younger. He's younger. He's yeah. young, bro. Yeah. So I think, like, he wasn't, he didn't, wasn't aware of who I was yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just put him on. And then from there, it was, I was just like, bro, when you ready, let me know. Mm -hmm. And shit, bro, I think I'm going to be real, bro. I found a beat. And because the beat that we rapped on, that's not the kind of shit that I I was gonna say. I you get found on. that beat. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I did. Like yeah, it. that's that's the homie said from it was uh, perfect. from uh Cali. I don't know exactly what part free from, but he did he did beats for like Draco. Y'all walk on Ralphie the plug, all them. He's done shit for all them much. niggas. So when I heard plugs music, it's easier for me when it comes to collaborating. It's easier for something. me to get on your yep. shit then you than get you on niggas mine. to get on mine. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you niggas get on my shit, you niggas start sound feeling terrible. intimidated. Yeah. Either you sound terrible not, or not you guys intimidated. Sound terrible. Nah, we nah, can, never. Yeah, plugs yeah. hard. But uh, either you get intimidated or you sound terrible because it's boom bap. This underground is MC. This this yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? I don't. This newer generation, I don't expect them to. Yeah, I don't expect them to be too in tune with that because how many MCs do we have that are young right now? Even even in the way you write, bro, like I've noticed a lot of the time you'll go without using the word like I or me or you'll say like uh, I'll, by 12 was a man or you know type shit. Yeah, like, yeah, I know what you're talking you, about. You'll speak almost in like, uh, what do they call that shit? Haiku or some shit Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I'll I, I tell you the truth. I used to do that all the time as far as like I, me, this, mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then when it, it was time, like, I, I would call it my artist development stage, where mm -hmm. it was like I was always in the studio with certain niggas that was contributing, you know what I'm saying? And much love to them, shout out to them. Mm -hmm. But, like, they was the ones that was like, when I would be recording, they'd be like, oh, stop saying I. So, oh, cool. so they'd be next to the engineer and be That's like, oh, up. do it again, Jay, but don't say that word. Genius. Yeah. Shout you know the fuck saying? out so, to them. That would help me get better. It made you, know you very different. Oh, That's yeah, that sure. shit helped me get yeah. better. It, it makes you. It gives you more to say. It, yeah, you know? it gives yeah. me more to say, and it and, and, and also takes off that uh, that uh, that feel of always trying to put it on me, 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 me. Right. It makes them feel like I'm talking, like it's I'm relatable. straight talking to a nigga. Like, Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. So yeah, but going back to like uh, with uh, plugs. So I found that beat, so I sent it to him because mm -hmm. I knew that was his style. I was like, bro, I got my verse, boom, sent it to him. He liked the verse. He that excited him, yeah, and he laid the hard. shit down, sent it back to me, and it was easy. It was just, it was easy collaboration, bro. He was great to work with. Uh, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? We both killing it. I love it, bro. Yeah. Hey, well, well, let's rewind. Let's go back way, way before that. Yeah, let's do it. How the hell you link up with Von Pope? Let's, oh, hold man. on, wait, wait, wait. We need another real, wait, real quick. I need to almost give this man another one of his own intros, like, cause if y'all don't know about Poetic Death, aka Von Poe the Seventh, you need to know. What it was, bro, was like I was twenty one. 
at 21 years old, I definitely was like, uh, I'm, I'm rapping. I'm doing this. Ain't nothing in Colorado, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially it's, not back then. I'm 21. I'm 20 going into 21. This is 2011. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing going on. This is the era for Colorado rap. This is the era of Young Doe, Julox, mm-hmm. Interstate Ike. Before Box Boys. Yeah, and all that. before yeah. that shit. Yeah. Them niggas was the ones doing it in our hoods. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember them niggas handing out stuff. Albies for she's. Yeah, shit. Albies. I remember him. All these niggas. And then, uh, but I'm gonna be real, that kind of music wasn't my shit. Yeah. Like, I respected them niggas because I seen them in my hood. Mm-hmm. But I'm a, I'm an MC. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I left. Like, I, I, I was with my wife and shit. We was young. She wasn't my wife at the time, but we was young. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to LA. Mm-hmm. I gotta go to LA. I got family in LA. So I could rest my head and I could chase my dream. You know, most people don't relationship that shit in, boom, boom. She moved in with my parents, was with my parents while I was out. Oh, so shit. I'm I'm in I'm in I'm in California chasing yeah. my dream now. I'm out there and so this how raw of a nigga I am before I moved to California. I said, I gotta have something to do in California. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up booking myself for a talent show <laughs> in North Hollywood, California, yeah. where it was like right down, the, not down the street, but maybe like a, a 15 minute drive from my uh, mm-hmm. cousin house, my cousin Stella, shout out to her. Mm-hmm. That's where I was staying. And uh, I went to that talent show to do my shit. I had my CD, everything. I did my own shit. Yeah. Like ever since Colorado, I burned my own shit, made my own covers, yeah. made my own beats, everything. I, yeah. This is what I wanted to do. Sure. So got to the talent show. And everybody out there, like, this was the era, like, right before YG and all. Like, maybe, like, right when YG was popping. Like, tooted and booted area. Mm-hmm. So, it was, like, a lot of L.A. artists was in the in the, in the the building at this talent show. Yeah. L.A. bass sound. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the YG sound. The, that like, West that, Coast that, shit. Yeah, yeah. shit. And there was only one other nigga that was there that was on some rap shit. Yeah. And that was that nigga. You know okay. what I'm saying? Oh, and, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was there. And... I'm going to be real. If I was to judge a nigga off the appearance, like how the nigga get up, mm-hmm. like dress, mm-hmm. that's not how I fuck with niggas. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a Colorado nigga and niggas yeah. used to roast me Facts. if you got Payless shoes on, Facts. if you got no name brand. Like, I used to get roasted on. Yeah. So, I knew, like, the way I grew up was like, nigga, you got to have you some Nikes, some Jordans, some Adidas. They tried to send me to school in the limited two shorts one time. Yeah. I just want to say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, my mom, I had the four-stripe Adidas, yeah. bro. Like, yeah, pay that shit. Like, come on, So, mom. I knew what it was to get made fun of and roasted Absolutely. for that shit. Absolutely. So, off of first physical appearance, that's not the type of nigga I fuck with. Okay. But I'm not like that. Yeah. So, Showed we start spark, sparking conversation. The minute the nigga start talking about Big L, I'm like, all right, he he yeah. on some shit that I'm on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Big L, yeah. all right, you on some lyrical shit. That hip hop. Yeah. So we all, we you know, conversating that talent show. Uh, I'm not the type of nigga to be like best friends with a nigga right yeah. off the bat. But, you know, conversating shit. And then I, I I was in LA. I'm chasing my dream. I need a studio. Mm-hmm. I need this. I need that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he like, yo, I got my own studio. Obviously, it's not like, it wasn't this. It was yeah, a home yeah, studio. Yeah. But nevertheless, it was a studio That's still where I could love. record. That's you know so what I'm much saying? Love, yeah. So I just asked the nigga, like, bro, could I pull up and record a song? I, you know, I just need maybe two, four hours of your day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, pull up. And uh, shit, nigga, I back then, I had my status out there, drove out there, drove to a spot. It was probably like maybe 20 minutes away from my cousin crib. And instead of staying there for like 12, for, for like four hours, I stayed there for like 12. Cool. Cause I already had songs. Cool. I have songs written. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. And we recorded a bunch of songs, and and that's how we kicked it off. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's how we met. And uh, I would say like after that, maybe like two months after that. So this, nevertheless, I'm gonna continue with the mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. But they threw another. They threw another ta- talent show. Okay. Same spot. Yeah. That nigga went. Yeah. He was letting me know, like, yo, pull up. I'm there. Cool, cool. But I was leaving okay. out of town in, two, in like, a week. Back to Literally. Earth. Maybe, like, four days. Yeah. And, like I said, I'm not best friends with niggas, so I'm not telling you my every move. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And uh, instead of going to the talent show, I ended up... So I go... See, there's a lot of shit niggas don't know about me. <laughs> like, like, when I was 18... 
Do you know who uh, Fiend for the Money is? Mm-hmm. So Fiend for the Money, he he he. If you're talking about currently, he, people would know him for fucking with like Currency, Jet Life, yeah. all that. Okay. But he one of the artists that was on. He was one of the artists. He's on my newest album, Southeast Ruiz. But he was one of the artists on Masterpiece. Make him say, uh. Well, damn. Legend. Pause. Hold the fuck on. He did friends just, with C did you Murder. Just on us? Hold yeah. The fuck on. You know what I'm saying? Fuck? That's he, crazy. you know this this C Murder's partner. This this, this this he's a part of legend. Legend, right? Legend. But nevertheless, when I was 18, he had came. Maybe 17, he had came to my crib. Oh damn! Because somebody in his family was friends and tied in with my big brother. Yeah. They tell me, oh, my little brother want to be a rapper. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. He pull up. First nigga that I ever met with a chain pulled up to my house yeah. and talking to me, listening to my beats. I was garbage. <laughs> I was 17. But he was listening to me. Love. And so I was in L.A., going back to L.A. Mm-hmm. I was in L.A. Instead of going to that uh, talent show, I was on the internet looking at who's in town, what's the concerts is going on. Mm-hmm. And it said, Currency Jet Life coming in. Okay. Featuring... Some other nigga and fiend for and the bro, money. Yeah. I said, I'm going there. So nevertheless, I went there. Oh, instead, instead of the talent instead. show. Okay, okay. Still kept in touch with bro, but yeah. he was at the talent show. Yeah. I went to this show. And it's a it's a whole story in and itself. Mm-hmm. You know, I ain't had no ticket. I don't know nobody except him. And I'm trying to get in there and then on the side of the building there's some cones. I'm like, that's where the bus park is. My boy got the woo wop. He was yeah. on the way. That's where the bus park is. Yep. So I stand right there all <laughs> night, bro. I swear to God, the bus pulled up. He did the traffic control, guy. The shit. bus pulled up. <laughs> the nigga comes out, my nigga Fiend come out. He like Papa J. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you remember me? Yeah. Y'all? Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm like, what's happening? He was like, what the hell you doing out here? I'm Waiting like, on yo. you, nigga. I'm like, yo, I came to say what's up, bro. I was like, I ain't got no ticket, bro. I want to see what's up. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, bro took me with him backstage. Yeah. That's how I met Nipsey Hustle. <sighs> Love. Oh you know yeah, saying? yeah. Throwback to that picture. That's too, how I made yeah. hustle. Yeah, and that's more what of my a legendary favorite. Night. You know what, I'm what a legendary. Yeah, night. that's, that's tight. how. That, that's Re- mad. Rest legendary. in peace to the legend, by the way. Facts. Yeah. Had conversations with Cuz. This is before he dropped the marathon. Sure. I mean, this is bef- yeah before he dropped the marathon. Yeah. Yeah. That's why niggas know him. Yeah. So I'm talking to him. Boom. Show ends. Boom, boom. And then the next day I chop it up with homie. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm going back to Colorado. Okay. And then he like, uh, yo, shit, pull up. I'll shoot you a video or something. Boom, boom. I didn't know he shot videos. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I've I've shot my own videos, but my own shit. My hand pull yeah. it on, put it on the motherfucking the the bumper of the car, and again rap in front of it. Sure. That's how much I wanted it, For you sure. know. For sure. And uh, uh, he said, shoot a video, cool. I showed up, pulled up to his crib. And nigga, we jump in his car, he go pick up a camera from somebody and he shoot me a video, boom, boom. We shot, I, yeah, we shot one video and then I left. And, uh, you know, out of nowhere, you know, I'm doing my thing in Colorado back again. Me and him kind of not, not talking, but I wouldn't say like, it's not not, some yeah, it's not no be. I yeah. mean, I really don't busy. know the nigga. Yeah, <laughs> you know just, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I just met the nigga. For sure. So I don't feel like obligated to holler at the nigga, bro. Uh. So, you know, I'm doing my thing in Colorado. I drive a project. And he's, I guess, he followed me on Twitter or something. And he seen that I drive a project. So he sent me that video. He's like, I see you working. Here's that video, bro. I mean, in retrospect, it's like, nigga, you shot me a video. Just send it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll choose when I drop it. Yeah. It's not your decision to tell me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But nevertheless, that was great for me. And he gave me the video. And I built. That was dope. I say, like, I, I want to say probably I spent a whole year in Colorado. Drop a project, just fucking with niggas out here. And then uh, a year later, I had went out back to California. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And there was only two people that I had numbers to. And uh, this is another story. Like, yeah. this is, it's all in between. It's all connected. Like, yeah, like, like, so I had became mad tight with one of my niggas, one of, one of Nipsey's best friends. Okay. It, like, if you look on one of the pictures where Nip got tattoos on his name, like a list of his homies, mm-hmm. one of the names on there was my homeboy that I befriended. Okay. Shout out my nigga, Hister Rob. Okay. I became friends with him. So I had Rob's number, and I had that nigga Poe's number. Okay. So I come out to California. I'm like, shit, I'm trying to chase my dream again. You know what I'm saying? Like, and nevertheless, I, I, I left California because I couldn't find a job. Okay. I'm not broke, nigga. I can't be yeah. asking niggas for Rob, yeah. asking niggas for money. I, I'm not like that. And uh, so I come back 
to California, and I hit both of them up. One day, I'm chilling with Rob. That's where I met Black, I met Black Sam. I yeah. met all because he took me to the hood. Best he love. showed. He introduced me to people. And then the other day, I fucking met up with Poe. Okay. He was like, let's shoot a video. Let's do it, nigga. Shit, I got songs. Let's do it. The video came out super dope. And then on top of that, he was shooting a video with somebody else. And, and he asked me, like, you just want to drop a verse on it mm. before we go shoot it? Mm. I was like, cool. I'll drop a verse. And I, should, I got in that video. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then I flew back to Colorado. I was working at Ikea. I was stuck in the freezers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know, I was just something hit me. I was just like, well, shit, this nigga shoot videos. I got songs. I was like, let me hit this nigga up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I literally hit this nigga up while I was in the freezer because I snuck away to the freezer because <laughs> they didn't see me on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell him, I'm like, yo, if I come out to Colorado, California for a whole week, can you help me shoot five videos? You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure he thought I was bullshit, mm. but he was like, for sure. I was like, all right, bro, shit. I'm I really going to really buy this yeah. ticket, nigga. I'm yeah. really going to do this. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I bought the ticket, and I go out to California. And then when I'm in California, that's where, like, he was like, yo, I'll shoot you the videos, but instead of shooting just videos and you drive, why don't you be a part of this organized threat shit yeah. that I got going on? Yeah, with Rev with, and Gav. And not even, before well, that. Yeah, Rev was in that, okay. but, like, at that moment, it was, like, Gavlin... J Mega, yeah. Vita Kills, yeah. and him. Man. So I was what like, What a time. Yeah, facts. And I, I told niggas, I was like, fuck it. Yeah, like, let's yeah. do it. I, don't got, I asked one person, yeah. and that's my homeboy, Brandon, still my homeboy to this day. I know him since high school. I met yeah. him in computer class. I yeah. asked that nigga, I said, bro, you think I should do this shit with the organized threat niggas? He said, nigga, if you don't do that shit, you stupid. You don't got shit going on out here facts. at home. Facts. Them niggas rapping, they in Cali, do that. You should do that shit. I was like, all right, bro, I'll do it. So I agreed to it, and I was like, yeah, we drop the videos on your channel, do all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I met, bro. He is part of the reason why I found you um, through his beef with Fora, and we didn't even got to get too into all of that. Nah, we can. We can get into it because, <laughs> see, that's the thing. Niggas don't know. I'm outside, bro. So even with Fora, like, there was issues there hold or on, not. Hold on, hold on, So, so let's let let us be clear. I did not know who Papa J was. I saw a dude walking around in a uh, j- a, j- a Jason mask or a Michael Myers mask <laughs> in the back of one of Von Poe's videos, right. dissing this dude Fora, who a right. lot of y'all probably listen to, especially if you're 14 and the right. female. No, but definitely <laughs> listen to uh, Fora. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Speak, speak on how that all kind of accumulated. Man, bro, it's the real shit. It's like, I mean, everybody's perspective different, mm-hmm. but what I saw and how I was, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying like how that whole shit transpired. Like, this is where I like letting niggas know. Like, I'm, I'm really that kind of person where it's like, that's why I get upset with niggas, bro, because niggas ain't ain't wrong or right. Wrong or right, I'm with you. Period. That nigga was wrong for this because. Yeah. But I'm riding with you, bro. Let's do it. Okay, okay bet. <laughs> and, in, in, and in all intelligence, you shouldn't have dissed cuz because he was big. Yeah. He was blowing up. He was doing his thing. That's not a smart business move. Yeah. But nevertheless, we got beef with niggas down the street. Let's go shoot up they block. Okay. I'm with it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ride with my homeboys. So that was what he was on. But, you know, that was all petty shit. It was just ego, bro. Like. He had really no reason to speak on that. I mean, to even try to start a conflict with him because, you know, like I said, Four was popping mm-hmm. and he had his own show. Sure. And it was like a show that he threw for like cancer oh, okay. and all that. Yeah. And, you know. With Dizzy in them, right? I, I, I'm not even okay. sure. Okay. But all I know is for that, and I guess niggas was like, some about that, okay. having an issue with that. Sure. To me, in all reality, shit, nigga, I don't got nothing to do with me. Sure. Bro, want to throw a show for this? That's his business. Bro, I'm not here to save the world. Nigga. I think I think you know? I have heard a little bit about this. And that, yeah. yeah, that's how they started beefing because it was like nigga, it was a fundraiser. A I'm yeah, supposed to get paid. And to yeah. me, it's like from what I know, niggas can say what they want. Like, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not. I'm sure. on my business. Sure. But from what I heard, was like the nigga, all the money he made off the tickets, he donated to cancer. Yeah. But all the money he made off his merchandise, he kept for himself. Okay. I don't see a problem with that, That's bro. As a merch. businessman, I'm, nigga, what? Yeah. I need to make some money too, but I'm definitely donating. Okay. 
But I guess that's where the issue started. They had conflict over that. Lesson learned. Have your own business together. Get your own merch. Get your life together. Oh, let's hold on. Let's let's segue into that. Fuck fuck all that. That's that's good enough. But let's segue into this merch game. Real Nick quick, is real quick. Okay, I okay, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got but like, but like, for that shit happened, I ain't really ever had no issue with Cuz. Okay. You know what I'm saying he okay. cool dude. He do his thing with four. With, with four. Okay. Yeah. It was just like some rap shit. I had met the nigga at a show when I was out there. Yeah. That's why he was in one of the videos that I had. And like that's why people think like oh Papa J and Four were cool. We wasn't cool like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't friends. We wasn't. We didn't grow up together. Not. Mm -hmm. We was acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and, and too. In, 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 in rap. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's all love. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, if my nigga shooting at you, you gonna and I'm with him. Yeah. You gonna think I'm gonna shoot at you? Yeah. So I I understand if he don't fuck with me, right? Yeah. But nevertheless, you know, I'm not gonna say what I was doing. I was at. A, I ended up at one of the Denver hospitals. Okay. The nigga was at the hospital. Uh, you know damn, what I'm saying? Damn. He. I. I don't know. No, no. I don't know why he was at the hospital, but I ran into him at the hospital. Okay. I seen Cuz. Mm -hmm. He seen me. Def definitely wasn't like what up. It was wasn't weird. Nothing. It was like nigga, like. Like why are you? He looked at me here? like. Never in a million years did I ever expect to run into this nigga. On this in day, Denver, at this place, yeah. In, in the hospital. Yeah. So I walked away, and you know, your mind played tricks on you and shit, and I was just like, is it really that nigga? I mean, yeah. he looked at me like that, so I kind of feel like it was that nigga, but you know, like, he's, you don't know. He's been here, okay? Yeah, no, yeah, you don't here. know. Yeah. So I went up to the nurse. I said, hey, is that a famous singer? Yeah. Is that Marco? No, whatever? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what the name said, yeah. but I didn't put two and two when the name yeah. was on the room. Because I, I'm just not thinking this nigga's in my city. But I asked the nurse, and she said, yeah, that's it. that's a famous singer. I ain't even asked for permission, nigga. I walked back to that room, and I knocked on what the door. Nigga? <laughs> no, on my mama. Yeah. Knocked on the door. The bitch that was with him opened the door. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, he sat up like this in the bed, and I looked at him, and I said, bro, you straight. Right. You good. Yeah, what the fuck? Don't worry about nothing. Keep doing your thing, bro. Love. Yeah. And I walked away. I didn't need him to explain. So I don't need you to be like, okay, so I look. I don't need nothing yeah, from you. Because I don't know you like that. Yeah. But I just want you to, you looked at me like, Feel damn. Feel safer. Than yeah, yeah, you looked at me yeah. like, damn, nigga. I'm not, I'm not here to hurt well, you, bro. I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in my two cents just, just because, A, I'm a, I was a fan of his. And B, this isn't going to probably get brought up again with nobody else on the on this platform. Facts. So, um, <clears throat> as a fan of Fora. As a fan of hip-hop, I came mm -hmm. across Fora from a very close friend of mine who, you know, shout out to Cassie. She was into real hip-hop before I ever was. Right. right. So she was putting me on. Um, she showed me Fora. Uh, Fora was doing his thing in the hip-hop world, not only in MC and in music, but in graffiti as well. And Facts. I respected that a lot. Yeah, like, that's, that's L.A. shit. That's super hip-hop. That's super LA, LA shit, even going back to Vel to Wonder. Yeah, Vel that's, too. That's uh, graffiti shit. I, that's listen, why I fuck with it. I love Vel. If Vel hears this, just, just you know I love you, Shorty. I done seen you. We talked about it. I love you to death. You, you, my, you my girl for real. Um, but but I went to, uh, I think uh, Fora linked up with Adam Stroll to do a Cervantes show. 2014? Okay. 15? No, it had to be... I had to be 14 because I had just gotten my, my BM pregnant. Okay. And my baby was born in 2015, right? Okay. And so I did the whole fan thing, get up on stage, spit his bars with bro, blah, 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 with the woo. I'm like really going through the, the childhood stages of being a fan of somebody. Right. Then he drops some information one day saying that he was going to go um, public with his label, but he needed a kickstart. And he was trying to raise the Yeah, I remember that shit too. Right? I'm saying, bro, like I remember all that shit. So how... For a, if you hear this, you he could answer took, this question. He took all that money. Allegedly, my money, my allegedly, money. <laughs> allegedly. I don't know because no, no, it's you know, true. I don't know. He took everybody's so fans. I can confirm. He took all his fans' money, and then he ended up signing a deal with Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. Oh, Am I fucking bugging, bro? Okay. Yeah. Shout out for her. You can tell your side of the story with shit. You took my motherfucking money that could have gone to my baby and shit, nigga. I gave you like over nine hundred dollars, some shit. You went and signed to Warner Brothers after taking three hundred and fifty thousand dollars from your fans for a kickstart to start a yours truly label. Where the fuck is it at? 
Let's be real. Let's let's start the platform off on a spicy fucking note if we have to. Where the fuck is the Yours Truly label at? Because there's no Warner Brothers imprint, and if there is, you're fucking lame, and it's not working. Because the only thing I ever hear about you is when you got a famous feature. I'm sorry. I love you. I grew up on you. I respect you for being hip-hop as fuck, but we have real issues as a fan and consumer and, and an artist. We got to figure that shit out. So I'm sorry. I, no, I, I, I tried to avoid it and shit, but no, I, I need hear you, yeah. bro. I, I heard them stories, and yeah. like I said, as an artist, like, I mean, that's not my business. It's not on you. It's yeah, not on me. Exactly. God bless the nigga. That's not. That's Facts. not how I do shit. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. I'd be up a milli by now <laughs> if I did niggas <laughs> like that. You, you know me, what I'm saying? Like, I. But I you just can do better. Bro. I don't know, bro. It's just the way I was raised. It's just like you know what I'm saying. Like, nigga, I grind for mine. Yeah. I'm not taking it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, speaking of if which. If I take it, I'm going to wear a mask and all that. Your first hustle clothes, your second hustle words. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. My third hustle held my pops until he in that dirt. Where the fuck you get, like, okay, maybe we got to do this off camera, but I need the merge plug. Because yo shit, I had that shit three years. That shit is quality. Yeah, yeah. Quality fire merch. Yeah. Nobody in the city is doing it that Man, high quality. bro, if I tell you, I got to kill you, bro. I know, I know. <laughs> if I tell you, I got to kill you, bro. <laughs> Y'all Valid. niggas know that they said that it's screen th- two. Yo, yo, nah, you he, know what I'm saying? He, bro is killing it. Merch, merch game is not being touched by nobody in the city, by, except bro, right now. Real so shit. I'm, proud, Real I'm shit. happy for Real it. Shit. Nah, I mean, you know, I just try, and I, I, I'll be real. Like when it comes to merch, I do all kinds of shit, bro. So I definitely have a certain plug that I do stuff, but then I have like a plug as far as like embroidery. Okay. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creator, bro. So like when I watch, like you know. Fashion runs, or I watch. This is I do all this shit when like my wife is asleep. Yeah, okay. In, I be in bed. She okay. Asleep, I be watching all these things. You put on the RuPaul. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> but I be watching like you know Kanye's fashion. Of course. I be watching, of course. Like when I like I just got done watching all the the uh, New York the Fashion new, Week. Yeah, that and then I got done watching the. So they just dropped Scream Six yep. and all the actors I'm about are to doing see that tonight. Yeah, so, you yeah. gonna love it. Okay. All the actors were doing their press runs. Cool. And. Uh, uh, I was looking at the outfits okay. because they definitely the way they dress for the press runs is not how they dress in of course in real life or it's not how they dress in public. Yeah. I mean in in the movies. It, it, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. The the way they dress in movies doesn't reflect their taste. The, in, yeah, it's in, the character in, in, in fashion for sure. But when they do their press runs, you can see like oh that's yeah they you know step so yeah. I look at all that stuff in uh. I'm a big fan of that. So sometimes, some days, if I see a jacket I love, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, like I'll just grab something and just cook some up. Sometimes I'll make 10 of them. Sometimes I'll make one of them okay. and just do it. You know what I'm saying? And just, uh, we good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah, like I'll just make pieces like that, bro. And then, like, I, like my wife even knows, like, I'll never drop the same hoodie twice. Okay. And the way I do that shit is, like, I look at it like Jordan's. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my nigga Jordan drop exclusive shit. Yep. And when he drop it, sold out, it's out. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You got to do it with the resellers and all that shit. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So, I like to do that. And I'll probably, I'll, I'll, I'll end up redropping shit. But, like, I just like creating. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Where does the, okay, what's, so what is, talk about the, the three eyes, the triple eye. The mm-hmm. eye how, how do you even define, what do you call that icon itself? What's, how do you it, go it, about defining it? It's, it? Uh, what's it called? It's, I call it as, I call it as a, my shit is called the Eye Society. Okay. And it started out as just the three eyes and shit, but to me, it's an Eye Society. It's something like a secret society. You got to be in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's for my fans. You know what I'm saying? The outsiders. You know what I'm saying? Sure. That's what I call them. And yeah, that's just how it started. And it's just, you know? Yes, yeah, like Third eye shit. Absolutely. All that shit. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? Be intelligent. So... That's 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 the name of it. And that's, that's proud, what I Proud member on. over here, ladies and gentlemen. Facts. Yeah, my guy, my guy. My guy, Gage, has always... My whole life, I've been supporting. supporting me. So. I, I didn't know bro was a Colorado artist. I was just listening to bro as a hip-hop artist. And right. I was like, this big dope. And then when I came across CEO State of Mind, and I was like, wait. He's from Colorado? What? And I'm looking at bro, I'm like, did you know this? He's like, I've been knew this. You didn't tell me this, motherfucker? Right. Like, y'all and the thing, And right. the thing is, it's like, I, I could understand why a lot of people would think I'm not. Yeah. I call it that all. Very different. Because one, I'm very different, yeah. like you said. And then two, it's like when it comes to organized threat, none of them niggas is Colorado niggas. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You was the only one basically. I'm the only but one. that might have put them on here. That put them way. that definitely yeah. put them on I here. I was I would say so. 
No, nah, yeah. facts. That definitely put niggas on to hear it. But also, it put... How can I say it? It let, it let, it let them niggas know that Colorado niggas ain't here to play with. Yeah. And then it let Colorado niggas know, like, yo, bro, get up out here. Yeah. Get busy. It's like, yeah, like... If, I mean, if you're not working, you're you know what staggering. Like, yeah. bro, just because niggas is from some other state don't mean I ain't harder than them. You so, know what I'm okay, so to touch on that, mm-hmm. like, in my experience, I think a lot of the stuff that we go through as, like, hip hop, and, like, you know, my experience is limited because, like, I'm not necessarily outside with everybody. Like, like you will catch me in conversations with a couple people. Like, I work with, you know, Stevie Bugs at his studio, or like I'll talk to my boy Vice, you know, because we work here and shit. But I'm not super outside. My my experience is very limited. You'll just catch me at a couple shows and shit. But I've noticed that a lot of the things we go through in Colorado and Denver and Aurora as a hip hop community, it either equates to hip hop culture or hip hop, or, or no, excuse me, it equates to the rap culture or it equates to the rap game. And and the reason I call it those two different things is because we either are going to look back on this with a great memory or we're going to look back on it and we're going to be upset that we had to jump through those fucking hoops and it was some bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you've experienced the divide between those things? Like, do you feel like there's a difference between the game and the culture and what do you feel like you're a part of the culture? Do you feel like you've experienced the game, the bullshit that comes with it? You know what I'm saying? Talk on that for me. Yeah, definitely. Both of them. The culture is the culture. Like, the culture is like, for example, like, the culture is like me me doing my thing for years and then out of nowhere, like, shout out my nigga Nug Life. Like, my homeboy Nug Life from Cali, like, he met me when he was 15, okay. 16, right. just trying to do his rap shit. I was already doing it. Later down the years, like, now we work together. Now he the one with 100,000 monthly subscribers. Now he the one popping, doing his thing. And he reached out to me out of nowhere. Like, I want to do a song with you, da 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 And then I do music with him. And then out of nowhere, that's how he connect me with Vail the Wonder. Yep. Vail was fucking with Organized Threat. Yeah. But it never connected the way it was supposed to. as hip-hop shit. She, but she later, got her own shit, though. Yeah, but later down the road, oh, yeah, definitely. And then later down the road, that's Nug Life was the one that facilitated that with me and her, right? That's what I call hip-hop culture. Yeah, that's love. That's culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga know me since before he was doing this shit. He was a fan of my shit, probably a fan of Vail's, and he connected them dots. That's culture. Now, that industry shit, that game shit, yeah, niggas done did it. And experience that shit because niggas will tell you the game is lip service, bro. Yes, sir. Niggas will tell you one thing, do another. It's on you if you want to pack them out and ruin your career, or if you want to just you know not take it personal and just it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You do what you do. Don't take it too personal. And when the time is right, things will fall into place. I, I you know, I tell people like you can choose to progress through it. You can choose to stress through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You going you, you know, like me, me and this nigga was talking about something earlier. I was like, man, you can cry about it all day, but it's yeah. not gonna get no better, bro. Yeah. It's- and and then also on top of that, it's like you gotta understand, like these, like you can't get too attached to this shit. Like these yeah. niggas is not your friends. And and this music is not your baby. It grows. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You gotta your let it grow. Your songs is yeah. your baby. Exactly. This but rap game's not music, yours. The whole yeah. Keeps changing keeps evolving keeps going and and i've been the artist where it's like niggas is into boom bap and rap shit and i'm that nigga and then i'm i've also experienced where it's like boom bap is on the we not paying attention to that shit but nevertheless i ain't changing my shit you know what i'm saying gotta keep going hard who do you think inspired you to keep your uh your bars up like in your songs and shit the ghost biggie pop yeah dipsy Nas, Ho, Big L, who else, who else, who else, who else, who else, who else, who else? Exhibit, Corrupt, shout out Corrupt, Corrupt my nigga, can we, I'm connected with Corrupt. Can, oh, I knew that, I was going to say, yeah. can we uh, can we talk about that Corrupt connect real quick? How the yeah, fuck definitely. did that happen? What the fuck? Man, bro, like, so, as my boy, uh, Juan, shout out my boy Juan, like, see, the thing is, all right, like I told you, I'm cool with my nigga Rob, he from Rolling 60s, he from, he, he, he grew up with Nip, you know what I'm saying? N- that nigga Rob was on tour. He was on the Smokers Club tour. Okay. The Smokers Club tour came to Colorado. Yeah. He knew me. He hit me up. Jay, let's link up. I need some weed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, bro. I was like 19, 20. I said, I got the weed. I can get the weed. Bought some weed. Maybe 21. And uh, took the weed to the fucking hotel that they was at. Served him the weed. 
gave it to him for free. Two ounces here, nigga. Take that for you. I'm going to hold this one. I'm going to roll up all while I'm with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And y'all keep that for the road or whatever. No charge. And uh, we went to the we went to the show. One of the niggas that was on tour with him, with my nigga Rob, was my homeboy Juan. Okay. He's Big U's nephew. Oh, shit. That's yeah. respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These are the things that, like, when it comes to social media, when it comes to, like, it's like, these are things niggas can say and flex on you niggas. Like, yo, bro, like, real talk. But it's not things to flex about. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd rather it stay. I, yeah, I'd rather stay connected. Like, yeah. what you know is you know. Yeah. And uh, so my boy, he's big huge nephew and shit. So he took a liking to me. My bad. He took a liking to me. And uh, we stayed in touch through so many years, so many years, so many years. And uh, I was cool with him. I was cool. So <laughs> allegedly, like, I, I don't know if it's true, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you, did y'all hear that story when it came out uh, that uh, Wack 100 had got snuffed yeah. at a show or whatnot? Because of Big U. Yeah. yeah. It was, right. Allegedly, it was Big U's nephew. Yeah. That's my oh, other homie. That's, that's, that's my other homie. Different home. nephew. My nigga, okay. That's, okay. That's, they, but they cousins. Yeah. Right. yeah. They all cut. Yeah. But I'm cool with all of them. That's hard. So it's like, that's my nigga Tiny Draws. You know what I'm saying? He took a liking to me. Shout, shout out the nigga named Tiny Draws. Oh, if your name Tiny Draws, I'm not fucking yeah, with you, bro. Yeah, yeah, you, you real gangster, bro. That's my dog, bro, For to this day. That nigga a real gangster. Hell yeah. And uh, uh, so they all took a liking to me. And, you know, I think that just comes to the fact that I ain't... Just authentic. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to be a gangster. I'm not trying to be tough. I'm Same. cool. I like y'all niggas because, you know, my favorite rapper, Nip. Being around you is like being around Nick. Like yeah. I get to feel that texture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And uh, and if we riding, let's ride. But yeah, yeah, yeah not nah, facts. I just ain't got to be a gang member. To yeah, be, I ain't yeah. got to be that. I'm, I'm right there with you. Exactly. Bro. So they all took a liking to me. So I've I've had a relationship with them for ten years. That's like my boy Juan says, man, he always tells me, you dumb. You've known me for ten years and you don't ask me to do anything. You don't ask me for no favors. You don't do. I said, bro, that's just not me. I fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? He said, and, and I'm sure if time comes, you'll let him know. Like, yeah, it, yeah. You if know. I have to, but I just, I'm not yeah. like that. And yeah. he, he was like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna do something for you. That's what's up. And you know what I'm saying? That nigga, uh, what's it called? That's how I got in contact uh, with corrupt. Uh, he is like this with corrupt. Cool. Like corrupt, look at him like a nephew. That's love. So that's how I, I connected with him. And my boy Juan showed him my music. Put him on to who I am. Legend. And so he came out here with Daz to do a show. And that's how I met him. I was mm -hmm. with him at the show. I was chilling with him all night. But I think at that point, Corrupt thought I was just a fan. Yeah. And then later on the road, my boy Juan was like, yeah, you met my homeboy. He rapped. He, yeah. he cold. He yeah. was like, this the nigga I met? <laughs> he was like, nah, call that nigga right now. The humble that's, motherfucker. That's how I got on FaceTime with Cuz. And that's how I started building my relationship that's with him. Cause he was just like he he didn't believe that the nigga that me, how I look, mm -hmm. was spitting that shit yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. And and on top of that, the song that he showed him was the one with Amy. Okay, perfect. You know what I'm saying perfect. You know I'm eating that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I built. Mm -hmm. I I got the opportunity to build with corrupt and keep building with him and that's shit. Love. So that's love. And he's it's such a dope thing because it's like I grew up to Dog Pound. Of course. I grew yeah. up listening to corrupt. L A L A. I mean New York, New York. Uh, all that shit, bro. bro Dog food. I don't. I don't everything. know why I feel this way. This is gonna be the weirdest comparison. Everybody, yeah, everybody in hip hop gonna look at me weird. But I've always felt like corrupt, and maybe Daz too. They're almost like the West Coast naughty by nature, bro. Cause I love naughty by nature, and they make me want to party while keeping me feeling hip hop. And Daz and corrupt always had that same effect on me, like. Like these niggas is spitting for real, but I still want to put this on at the party. At the, nah, the facts, facts. Shit, you know yeah, I think that's a West Coast thing. Is it? Because West Coast music, West Coast music, make you feel you want to yeah. party. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, let's play house. Nah, facts. And that's you know, true. like, yeah. And, and I'm gonna be real. When it comes to West Coast shit, like, not, not only is West Coast shit built off of gang culture. Yeah. Like. You know, it wasn't until Snoop and all them niggas came through the door. It, New York niggas wasn't saying, bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. <laughs> yeah. Them niggas wasn't talking about that kind. And that's For just sure. street language. That's sure. not a reflection on how women are in the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
but just that's that street culture, and I feel like they brought that ambiance to, to, to hip hop all exactly. Around. Yeah, you know you're what I'm right. saying? So, like, right. you know, the East Coast didn't bring that party. Right. Oh, bitches, take your top off. Let's throw the champagne on them. That's West right. Coast shit, right. bro. New York niggas is different. They hustlers. They 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 different. It's a different and, style. And I guess my only point in that point is like. Even though you have, you know, people like Cube, and you got people like Too Short, you got people like uh, 40, like Facts. they're all super lyrical and shit, but the way Daz and Corrupt make niggas feel, it's like, it make me want to get back in the studio, yeah. not go put it, on, put it on for my family and shit sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they remind me that they still really rappers, and I'm yeah. like, that shit is so cool. So authentic. I, they, I always love yeah, that. they artists. Like, it's just yeah. like my nigga Juan told me about uh corrupt. He said that kind of shit. You don't lose that shit. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? When you're a lyrical genius, you don't lose that shit. Yep. You're not rap for three years. When you rap, it's gonna be you a genius. You a lyrical genius. Yeah, you know I definitely quit for a year. I don't know why I did, but I came back and I was even doper. I exactly. Know. You know what I'm saying? So it's in you, and it's like, and then Daz, he a lyrical nigga too. He can rap, but he's also the producer. Yeah. So it's just like, it's dope. It's dope, a dope, dope mix. Dope, 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 dope. So are you a fan of like battle rap though? Yeah. I don't want to disrespect battle rap and say I'm a fan of it when I'm not like entrenched in it. You know what I'm saying? But do I respect battle rap? A hundred percent. When it comes on. Touch yeah, a hundred percent. Because I, I mean, my number one favorite rapper is a battle rapper, Eminem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One so, of the originals. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. the best. And then I fuck with Matt Hoffa yep. and his show and everything. Yep. I love that kind of shit. So I, I I respect that because, you know, it's harder to do battle rap than it is to do the more modern rap. 100%. That's put it out to the public nowadays. So I always respect I always respect battle rap, but can I say that I'm entrenched in it? Like I know every nigga's name and I know they who they battled and shit? Nah, I, I can't say that. Uh, I say I fuck with Math Hoffa. I really like Math Hoffa. Uh, ah, that nigga, I both, bro. Because I'll never forget being on YouTube as a young nigga, like 17, watching that nigga sweep that floor with that one nigga, bro. It was, he would say, yo, son, why your brim touching my nose, son? Was it Solomon? Was it I don't know his name, Solomon? but all I know he said, yo, son, why is your brim touching my nose? And then he just smacked the nigga. And I was like, yeah, Matt Hoffa type. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, we, but that to battle rap. We're uh, we kind of we're we're running tight on time just for the sake of you know we got everybody gets paid, including cameraman, including the studio, everybody. But um, I wanna I wanna make sure that we wrap it up on on a keynote. A hundred percent. Uh, we we here at Dug Out the Crates, we are fans of the artists that we bring here. We'll we'll talk about a couple other things in general. Like we might cover sports a little bit. We'll talk about our own lives and blah blah blah. But the whole real goal of Dug Out the Crates is to talk about hip hop. Okay. We 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 trying to stick to the rap stories, the 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 community, the culture, the influence, the the progression. We want to be a part of that. We want to talk about everybody who's done something to us that matters. And oddly enough, there's a certain line from Papa J that resonates so well mm. with that podcast. And so we want to leave it on, on that note, but I got to grab something real quick. This for me? What you talking? Yeah. What you doing, yeah, bro? Niggas don't buy me you. Give me good man, one, man. This shit, this shit, man. We we glad to have you here, bro. Thank you for being our first guest. Oh, yeah. Real, off top. What's this? So the front side, that's our that's our logo. Yeah, obviously, we yep. dug out the crates dug because out the crates. I love we used that. to that's we used to shit. you feel me? Yeah, I'll we talk. used to dig through crates and this yeah, is what nigga, we dug Jake out. Jake Dilla shit. Yes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out Jake Dilla. But but the back, that's for you personally. We're not giving that version to nobody else. That's on that's on Papa J and and Perry. That's our, it took it took me time to turn off. So go my rap. Rap gave the stories that nobody ever told mom. Nobody's yeah. ever told our stories the way we don't feel tell that. Stories. That's real shit. That's bro, some Colorado we, shit. We man. love you, bro. Like we we mean it when we say that's it. That's love, love bro. I'm definitely rocking this. <laughs> Just getting on the gram, all if, that. Like, if I got bro. the size wrong, we'll make another one, and your lady can have that one. Nah, yeah. What size is it? It's a uh, extra large. 
Oh yeah, that's a little big. Is it? I, I yeah. wondered. I was like, I don't know. He's taller than me, but well, not we that gonna much. rock it, okay, nigga. Yeah, sure. Watch it a couple times. They I'm run small. They run small. I, I got to get your <laughs> nigga, distributor. That's my lyrics. Come on, bro. I might even I might even fuck around and frame this. That's hard, huh? Like, bro, like that's fire. Shout out, shout out to my wonderful graphic designer, my wife, my queen, NZO3. Hey. Y'all go follow her. She's doing her thing. We love her. Uh, but you know the ladies, you can still hit my inbox site. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do hey, that. no, it's love. <laughs> hey, but uh, one more time, everybody, please make some noise for my man Papa J Ruiz, Aurora legend in the building. One hundred percent. We're gonna have more guests, but none will be you. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. If you have anything you need to promote, please let them know. If you have anything in the future that you ever want to talk about, come back and see us, bro. No, one hundred percent. Like right now. Papa J. Ruiz, Southeast Aurora, stand up. We did it. We doing it. We're going to continue to do it. Uh, L.A. was happening. You guys, thank you guys so much for having me. All my fans that listen to this, you guys know I love you. Um, everybody that come that know me from Organized Threat or know me outside of Organized Threat, love y'all. The story is a story. And uh, what else can I say? Man, go get my album, Southeast Ruiz. Banging, it's hard, lyric, beats, storytelling, all that. And you definitely will see me here in a couple months because I'll be dropping another project this Let's summer. Go. And I'm, I think this might be the first ha- stop I got to make oh, let's in my go. press run. Oh, you heard it here you first. Let's know. go. So What's up? You'll see me back here soon. We'll talk about the next project, all that. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is the first and original episode of Dug Out the Crates. Once more time, make some noise for the team, the peoples, and the man, the legend himself, Papa J. Ruiz. Y'all have a wonderful day. Hey, God bless. I was excited. Go get this. Bro, let's go take some pictures. I'ma do it big It took me time Turn my pain into a gold mine Rap gave us stories But nobody ever told mine I told my granny on a deathbed Had the last name attached To some legendary changes I remember I was sleeping on the couch Back in the res You in the city had a drought Niggas wanted my spot Wanted my crown Got my yeah, hustle Cause I want better I need better The dream getter Green fed ya My rings bling better J. Ruiz They pay for T Faithfully A through Z Some friends just ain't for me yeah. Look. Feel like they're around the corner for a real one But I pray it's not before I touch a million Raise round with my partners and my siblings Give a better light to my two children Niggas talking out they mouth, we gon' kill something Swear to God I'm gon' have to go and kill something I'ma always be myself, my nigga I'ma always be myself Feel like they're around the corner for a real one but I pray it's not before I touch a million. Raise round with my partners and my siblings. Give a better light to my two.